This is John Black, Super Chemist. We're here to make, uh, and this is part two. We're here to make ethyl magnesium bromide. Uh, I'll finish the experiment. And then part three, I'm going to talk about how to improve on what I did or mistakes that I made. And uh, maybe in another couple weeks, I'll do this experiment again. You know, not on camera. But I'll, I'll see if I can improve the yield. Um, one of the main things was I didn't put any diethyl ether into the magnesium. I just stripped that stuff in right onto the magnesium. There was no heat sink like to absorb that, that heat that was being produced. And when I first started, you know, I had a lot of stuff just evaporated away. I, I just, there was too much heat. He came too fast. It was like so sudden. Anyways, this is one of those reactions that is known for blowing up um, because of the fact, especially when someone tries to uh, scale it up, you know, to make the reaction bigger. You, you might think you need, a, a, and I'm just making up how much ice you need. I don't know how much you need. But let's say for my reaction, I need one bag of ice. If you double it, you don't double the ice. You might have to ten times the ice. You might need ten bags for that. And if you double that doubled, that part that you already doubled, instead of you needed ten bags for that, you might need a hundred for the, you know, doubling it, you know what I mean, to the next level. Then instead of two hundred from doubling it from that, you might need a thousand bags, you know what I mean? Who has a hundred or a thousand bags of ice? Um, so keep that in mind. Don't, you know, I, I don't condone anyone... Uh, doing anything in the video or repeating anything in the video um, do anything if you do do anything do it at your own risk ether is very uh, flammable and if this reaction gets carried away all, it will instantaneously it did it to me the, all the ether went all the way up to the condenser all of it up to the very top well not all of it but half of it and that was when it was already fit you know I already had like 200 milliliters in there and say 150 of it went up into the condenser all the way to the top not to the mid part of the whatever it was trying to escape out through the um, calcium chloride I had up there if I didn't have that up there it probably would have escaped uh, so you know this is a very dangerous uh, experiment do it at your own risk Now that diethyl ether, it's forming a uh, coordination complex with the ethyl bromide. That's why you have to use either diethyl ether or uh, maybe 1,4-dioxane or a combo of both. Uh, there are a couple other ones, but if it doesn't, you know, if you got a solvent that does not form this coordination complex with the alcohol halide that you have then it will not do this reaction you know what I mean? you can see it boiling and I'll show you it refluxing out of the condenser I don't know if you can see it there. There. There's my drip rate on the other side. Oh, it's coming out fast now. Jeez. That's too fast. Yeah, I shut it down. It's getting up to 46, so I just shut off the uh, addition final. <coughs> and I'll wait for it to cool down a couple degrees and I'll start it dripping again. I can definitely see how this would get out of hand uh, seeing how it, when I first started. If I didn't, you know, if I had a big amount there, I would have bumped all my ether out of the apparatus, that's for sure. So lucky I'm starting slow. Start, I mean, starting a small. That's why it's uh, 
this reaction people would get you know it can get carried away real quick too. That's been about 38 minutes now. I still got a lot to put in. This might take like an hour or two. Next, next time I'm going to use my gram condenser on this. Work a lot better keeping the gases in check. I forgot, I wasn't even thinking about how volatile uh, diethyl ether is. So used to using these uh, lab bag condensers. It's supposed to turn the uh, liquid the milk milky color, a uh, gray milky color. Uh, doesn't seem to be doing it here though. Just turning the water like black, really. Still clear, but see how it's just a smooth boil, just enough to barely reflux it. And now it's been 50 minutes. You can see up here. Still got a lot. You know, that much. Yeah, I probably had like that much to begin with. It looks like half of it's still there. I take another 50 minutes just to get the other half in there. Been 55, 56 minutes. I'm just starting to put this last quarter of it. I'm just going to dump it in pretty much. I mean, I'll dump it in, but I'm going to, you can see the drip rate is really quick now. It's almost streaming in there. It's almost scaring me, but it's not building up the temperature. It's still staying at 34. 34.6 Don't worry, this ain't working too good It's that your parade, it should be heating up like crazy Been about an hour, five minutes. I haven't added any anything to this since for about seven minutes. You can see, I'm almost done now. It's just a little tiny, tiny little bit there. But I figure I want this to react. It doesn't look like I don't know. It just seems like there's a lot of metal left. Um, doesn't seem it's all reacting yet. So I'm going to give this time to react before I add in the last little bit. Oh man, as soon as I went off camera, about 10 minutes later, I shook it. I mean, shook it, shook it. This, to get this stuff, oh my god, it took off like a bandit. Uh, I, I didn't have ice water, I do now, but I just had cold water. I'd hurry up and hold one hand with the water and I'm getting ice out of the freezer to try and get some in here to get it cooled down man it, uh, all my literally half my liquid went up into the uh, condenser um, and it's still boiling vigorously
That's from the condenser. That's it. I want to see it like that. I don't want to see it like the whole thing is filled up. You can see it is taking some of my magnesium. This is taking a lot longer than I thought to, to do this reaction. It's taking forever. But I'm just going to keep putting ice on it or hot water or whatever it takes. Turn it. I still have this much left. Still haven't put many in since last time I brought that up. Um, cause it seems like it's just like it needs more time to react with what's in there or something, you know. <clears throat> but as soon as I shook it, it does seem like it's eating that metal up now. I'm just going to let that react more until I see it slowing down or whatever, and then I'll uh, trip some more in. <laughs> well, I added everything. It's probably been, geez, maybe an hour and a half two hours almost um, it's not boiling but it is at 34.7 um, so I'm just going to keep adding this hot water and maybe reflux in another half hour or something I, I, don't, I don't think it's gone to completion So as soon as I turned the camera off, I shook it. And you can see, now it's going crazy. Look at the reflux in there. I definitely got some more to go. Look at how good that's boiling. I actually had to put an ice bath on it as soon as I shook it. And then put and I put it on for like in five minutes and then I took it off and it's still boiling like it's crazy. This is good. This is actually nice oil here. So I'm glad because it didn't seem like it was all reactive. So we'll see. Okay, I let it reflux for a half hour. Well that's it, uh we made our Grignard reaction after it was refluxed for half hour there, or whatever I refluxed it for. We're done. Uh, but it still is water sensitive, water from the air you don't want to get in. But we did make it, and that is our nucleophile. Now, a Grignard reagent like this is not made to be stored. You know what I mean? You make it, and then you use it right then and there. Because it's so water sensitive, and it's so, it'll just degrade. You know what I mean? You do, as soon as you make it, you have your nucleophile. Now you need to add your electrophile so that you can make your product. In part three, I'll talk about my mistakes and also go over uh, ways to improve what I did so that you get a better yield. So, you know, I'll have a great day, and always remember science is great.